you're too loud. You're always too loud. Shut up. <laughs> so we're sitting here with a pair. Of, I don't have my I don't have my camera connected to the computer, but we're sitting here with one pair of Apple <laughs> earbuds split between us, like two uh, girls in the library. At yes, for real. <laughs> Listening to Missy library earlier, doing that. Yes, yes. Listening to the new Taylor Swift song. Yes. By the way, okay, that's a good place to start. Speaking of Taylor Swift. I understand that she is a seismic threat to the city that you know and love. Uh, yeah, she shut down the city for for a good weekend. Does um, this mean that we can treat her as a terrorist slash object of extraordinary rendition? You know, I don't know. Maybe uh, I avoided like the middle part of town like the plague because it was just like awful. So, yeah. The, well, the, speaking the script, of the plague. She's we coming were, we down were, to San Jose next. Oh dear. Well, yeah, we were invaded by Swifties for like you know, a while. Yeah, it was. Um, we 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 paid them tribute and they left. So you know, it, hopefully they won't be back for another season. They're very thin and very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're all very thin. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I've met some hefty Swifties. <laughs> I think you already found the episode title. We're not even a full <laughs> minute and a half in yet. Oh, uh, it's good to be back. Audio only, you know, can get away with more stuff theoretically. Very intimate. You could be pantsless. Who knows? I, I could, I could. I am not, unfortunately. But uh, you yeah, could yeah. pull a tubin. What? Tubin. God, is he back? Is he back on CNN? I, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't watch. Do you? Actually, that's a very good start. Do you watch any? cable news no now. i i i preserve my brain cells see i think that's smart we don't have the yeah, subscription but he we has brain cells to like to spare i know i sl- slept into the negative i know yeah well i mean I, I i don't i won't have time to speed run latin if i'm if i'm busy watching you know cnn and like hating my life so i'd, I'd rather enjoy my life so no I, I tend to avoid the the cable news but but please share with me the news about the cable news because i, I yeah i just avoid the news like plague what does speed running latin mean like how oh. is like you're 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 learning a language but very quickly like yeah, how does I, that work is it like the macarena like no, how fast is like that it? Uh, so, so, you know, some days if I have like a, if I have a day to spare, like, for example, the other day I was getting my car work done. And so I had like eight hours and I just did like five chapters of this book, just blasted oh. through it. So, oh. yeah, yeah, that's what speaking, speed means. speaking of which, and, and the listeners will not understand this and neither will Wyatt. But did you look at that book that I uh, uh, suggested to you? Yes, I did. Okay, very good. Pretty cool. We'll, we yeah. can talk about that later. We'll talk about it later, yeah. You can at least tell the listeners what the book is. No, it's, it's a did book you, about romance this is, languages. This isn't a yeah. check-in phone call. Like, did you read that book <laughs> that I sent to you? Yes. Did you get the card I sent? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> what, what kind of mystery do you think this is? It's a book about romance it's languages. It's a romance book. No. It's a book, book about is. romance languages and the history thereof. Mitch is Mr. Romance, and I'm Mr. Germanic, and so I'm trying to, I'm trying to bridge the gap, like the... Like the uh, like the ancient Germans of old who came over and fought for the Roman emperors, I'm trying to bridge that gap. So, does that yeah. make you a Visigoth or something like that? Oh, I would love to be a Visigoth. Although it's hard, I have to choose between Visig and Ostro, and I don't know. Don't make me choose. As long as I'm not a Vandal, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Vandals. You deal with plenty of those in Seattle. Oh, yeah. hey, we do. Yes, I know. I know. And unfortunately, we can't, like, you know, run them out of Rome. Although, you know, you know what happened to Rome. It seems to be, unfortunately, what's happening to Seattle at a, at a, at a, to a smaller extent. But, yeah, there's a, a fair amount of vandalism, a fair amount of uh, degradation, and, and not just from Taylor Swift fans. So, In fact, that was probably the cleanest weekend in Seattle was the Taylor Swift fans. So the funny thing is, is so um, our illustrious mayor, <laughs> uh, the Twitter account, his Twitter account's just interesting he's obviously not running it but the the sort of the 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 you know the the intern that they got to run it was to have this tweet that was like hey this uh there's uh the bite of seattle a taylor swift concert and and two mariners games uh see so make sure to take a uh, public transportation and like the replies um one of which maybe was mine perhaps 
but so we're, so, we're, we're something to the extent of, yeah, make sure you like make sure to step around like the HIV infected needles on the ground uh, while you're taking your public transportation. Also, don't get mugged on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they they did their best to clean it up, although I, I, I don't uh, there was a, a recent thing on the news that some um, some um, some advocate group advocacy groups in Seattle felt that the cleanup effort was far too authoritarian. So, you know, well, that's what we're going to have to go through here for the Olympics. And that's been kind of a big question mark for us, because I've noticed for the first time in over 10 years, there has been a concerted effort in the past few months, at least since the spring, since since it started raining a lot, that homeless encampments have been cleaned up, sides of freeways have been cleaned up, that's a big deal, and underpasses have been cleaned up. So areas that used to have 30 to 50 tents, back to square one now, like back to normal. And I, I really want to know why. I know that the Olympics aren't for another four years, <laughs> five years. I mean, okay. when do they have to when how long do you have to start getting ready for Olympics? Like, you know, so you and I talked about this and I think it was offline. I don't think it was in our last episode. Colin can tell us. If we talked yes. about it in our last episode. Um, you and I noticed as we've been driving back and forth between here and Orange County and L.A. more often, more frequently. They have started to clean things up, but only in certain areas. So, yes, you know, um. I have not mentioned this, but I have been uh, apartment hunting for the last uh, week and a half or so. And I noticed that the areas that Wyatt and I traversed, which were the more uh, touristy areas, right? Like like Hollywood yes. area, you know, that, like that kind if, of... Like if Colin visited, this is the places that he would visit. Right? Exactly, yeah. So the more tourist attraction it is the more clean it looked yes so the hollywood walk of fame has been cleaned the uh, underpasses around the hollywood walk of fame have been cleaned mm -hmm. but when i was apartment hunting out in like koreatown where the people actually live in the city it's just as dirty and nasty as ever if not more so <laughs> so yeah the the new socialist mayor karen bass to her credit she's done some or her administration or under her has done some good, but only in the places that people who are visiting might see mm. not in the places where people actually live, who pay taxes here. Well, if I may hit you with a very similar situation happening here in Seattle. Um, so uh, what remains of the, well, that, you know, back in the what early two thousands, they changed it to the international district. Okay. It's Chinatown. It's, it's always been Chinatown. Everyone who lives there calls it <laughs> Chinatown. The ID, the international district slash Chinatown uh, is like the, one of the worst parts of the downtown area. And now technically Chinatown, for those of you who know, Seattle is not in downtown. Yes, I know, but it's like right next door. It might as well be. And I, what seems to have happened, don't quote, I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on this. This is just my impression as somebody who's just a non-expert on all policing issues. But it seems like they've, excuse me, attempted to clean out parts of downtown. But what they've done is they've essentially pushed the worst offenders south into Chinatown. Um, I highly recommend for all of the, you know, for our many, many listeners, we hope to have many, many listeners, hopefully uh, check out Jonathan Cho on Twitter because he's a, he's a local Seattle, if you're interested at all in like sort of the, the, the degeneracy that is Seattle. Um, he's a, he's a local Seattle based um, independent journalist. And his whole thing is like homelessness and opioid crisis. That's his main mm. stuff. And he actually goes out at night with like a body cam on and like he's actually gotten to know people and not all of them. I mean, a lot of them are people who obviously have have issues, but not all of them are like the worst. But there are several of there's also like those bad apples and his area. The, the beat that he walks is really near pretty much in Chinatown. And I mean, it's it's it is a literal open air drug and stolen goods market like like something you would see out of a out of a Blade Runner movie, right? Like like full on like flaunting the law. The police are not allowed to do anything, even if they were allowed to do something. There's not enough of them, so it's just like the, Chinatown is really bad in Seattle. It's one of the worst parts of downtown, um, and so it's it's also interesting that in it sounds like uh, from what you've you've said, Mitch, that Koreatown 
which is not Chinatown, but Koreatown. Also, this, you know, formerly um, um, industrious, uh, or more orderly uh, immigrant neighborhood has now become sort of is getting worse. That's a shame to me to hear that because the thing, the same thing seems to be happening here, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Well, and, and that neighborhood, like here, Koreatown, like the, the, they've, they've, there's part of it that they've called Westlake now, which is the really bad part. That's, it's just next to downtown. So it's right across the little freeway pass. It's right there has been the area that's been kind of the worst. So if you're traveling through anywhere else in LA to downtown from like the whole Western part of the city, you go through Koreatown, Westlake, and it's like, okay, Koreatown itself, and then you get into Westlake, it's like, ooh, this is really bad. And you get back into downtown, and it's okay again. So it's this weird, like, I don't know, like bridge, like moat or something like that that they've created that's really bad. And it's sad to me that, like, the fact that they put up a sign, because in, in L.A. has, like, a, this like 235 neighborhoods, and so each one gets its own custom sign about, like, oh, this is Miracle Mile, this is, you know... West Little LA, Armenia. Little Armenia, which has a little Bangladesh. But they put up a sign that says Skid Row. So that's an official neighborhood name. And as soon as they did that, I'm like, oh, they're not serious. Like, they will never clean this up if they're actually calling it Skid Row. Which, by the way, because I've been apartment hunting on uh, on your Apple Maps of, of L.A., on Zillow, on Apartments.com, Skid Row is an actual neighborhood that they have nice. listed. Why? And it's like, okay, so anyone who owns an, like a property there who's trying to get people to rent it or live in it or whatever, they, you know, kiss your ass goodbye. Like, no one's – who wants to live in something called Skid Row? Who wants to live <laughs> on Cesar Chavez, you oh, know, God. Boulevard? Like, any any city that has a – Cesar Chavez or I'm sorry, Martin Luther King Austin, Boulevard. Austin has a Austin has a Cesar Chavez. But they're all it, bad. No, well in Austin, well, I haven't been, I guess uh, Cesar Chavez is downtown in Austin, so you kind of get this like weird mixture of good and bad blocks, I guess. It's not like a, the worst part of Austin though, at least not in my record. Maybe that's changed over the past three years since I've been there. Well, but I've yeah, been I've been to many, many, many big cities you know, driving through across, across the country, anywhere that there's a Martin Luther King Jr., you know, boulevard or drive or whatever, it's always in a very bad area of town. And that's really sad to his legacy because he has a good legacy for the most part. And it, I don't know, it's just kind of sad to me. No, the whole thing is tragic. Um, Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's interesting, which is sort of a, Pacific Northwest, very understated way of saying it's very bad, but it's interesting how, um, like in Chinatown in Seattle, like there's a lot of elderly people there, largely of Asian descent, right? Big surprise, um, who've lived there like their whole lives or most of their lives, or they're like for some, many of them, their entire lives. And like they're, they can't afford to, to move, right? They don't get to go and relocate. They're stuck, but they're like 70 having to take the bus. I mean, there's some heartbreaking images, footage that, Jonathan Cho has taken of elderly women getting off city buses with walkers, like having to literally like step over just people sprawled out, passed out, or just people like selling heroin <laughs> or shooting Maybe heroin. Maybe physically safer in China. And that's oh, the yeah. other thing too, is that the Seattle Chinatown, San Francisco Chinatown, even some of the, the well, the Chinatown that's in the northern part of downtown here and stuff like that, some of those neighborhoods go back 150 years yep. to when the railroads were built. Like, this isn't like a, oh, these people came over 20 years ago. Like, no, they that's literally a historic area for a reason. Yeah, it's 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 a real shame. I mean, and obviously this is just, it, these the, at least in Seattle, the issues are everywhere. But this just, it's I don't know, growing up, I always really enjoyed going to Chinatown because the food was so good. Yeah. And it's it, it used to be a place that I loved to go, right, for like the day, take the bus down there just because you don't have to park. And then you like, you know, you can go to like Wajimaya, which is this gigantic um, Japanese superstore with all sorts of like crazy, interesting, cool stuff. Not just Japanese, but like sort of huge pan Asian selection. And you could get really good food and you could like, you know, within a few blocks, you have so many different food options. And it's just like kind of an awesome place to be. But I just don't go there anymore. I mean, it's just not. 
it's not worth it, right? Like, it's not worth the hepatitis. It's just not worth it, right? Like, for the Anything needles or just the, the people. No. Never worth the hepatitis. Even the best humbow in the world is not worth hepatitis. I will tell you that. That chow is not that fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Now, it's, it, it's, it's a shame because it's like, it, it is one of the actual, it's one of the few places in Seattle that up until recently, at least, decided sort of to kind of preserve the older buildings and to kind of preserve somewhat of the older flair of, of you know, and feeling and vibe of the neighborhood and not just level everything and build fucking condos for tech bros. But <laughs> with mixed use on the on, on the first floor that nobody ever rents space in. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves – what is the point of having a, a first-floor retail if nobody occupies it? Yeah, I, I I guess it makes the community, which means the last, you know, people the – la, the, sli, the last slice of middle class that can afford to, to own a house somewhere feel a little bit better about the fact that they're getting completely bulldozed, like literally yeah. bulldozed. Well, I mean, this it, is – It's just it's just the lube, right? It's just a little bit of lube. <laughs> Make it a little bit nicer. As it goes in, right? I, I don't know. Maybe that's it. But you know, I've never heard somebody say that empty retail is just a little bit of lube. But I'll take it. <laughs> I. It's better you know, than no. It, it's better than no lube. I I saw something where I guess the mayor of Anchorage says they want to ship homeless into Los Angeles, <laughs> um, and that's also on the heels of whether you know Greg Abbott from Texas, the governor of Texas, sends buses here or. They're sending people from Florida to New York, uh, the migrants and things like that. Here's what I don't understand. Why is the only option to send these people further into the country? Yeah. Like, why is no one like – and I and I, I mention because, this on Twitter sometimes. Because boomer. <laughs> why? They're going to own the libs by, 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 by what? By getting their kids into the school system? Pretty like, much. Like we're going to own the libs by making sure that they have a Pretty right much. to work card? Pretty much. I mean, well, this is the Michael Malice quote, right? Like conservatives are just progressives driving the speed limit. They're just, yeah, they're not thinking through. They have the complete. My take is, and I'll, uh, this is not Mitch or Wyatt saying this. This is this is me. But my take is is that many well-intentioned boomers just completely lack any kind of like ability to think a few moves in the future, right? There is no forty chess. It's just like, yeah, what I, is the? How can I'll I own co-sign this now? That. Yeah. It, but but yeah, it, it's there, there's tactical error upon tactical error, and, and and the thing too is it's like okay, you get people further into the country, and then it like further devolves. It makes these situations that we're talking about in not just the LA area, and not just the Seattle area, but really any you know major metropolitan area in the U.S. And in ones that extent. have less resources to handle it, like exactly, do it we really it think s- that Sioux Falls, South Dakota, can handle no hundred it- hundreds and hundreds of migrants coming in? And it makes it so much worse for the people there. And I think a lot of like sort of the boomer con mentality is, well, everyone who lives there is a lib. That's just, as you guys have pointed out on your show, it's just not true. Like right. it is so much more mixed than you think. And you're just making people hate you. Right. Like right. And you're not fixing anything. So. Yeah. No, it's. Well, yeah. Um, at the risk of slightly changing the subject. Oh, please change it. It's depressing as fuck. <laughs> well, so I wanted to get on something a little bit more cultural, and I will circle back to some more political stuff because we're throwing some political topics at you that you have not prepared for, but you're going to run with it That's because the whole point of you're the good at show. it. Um, but something I want to get your opinion on, Colin, is how do you feel about astrology and and or star signs? Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm going to bring this back to something I brought up earlier, which is my apartment hunting because I have there, a story, oh, okay. but I want to so, get your opinion on Star Wars. Okay, so just my general opinion, because as somebody who, okay, yeah, I have a, I have a PhD in 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 inter, interdisciplinary PhD, but I did do a lot of religious studies stuff. So I guess I would say that uh, my general take is I do not personally believe that the various star alignments dict have any tangible or provable effects upon. Uh, your life and what happens. Although I will say that at least on a mythic level, I think it provides stories that people can tell. And I think that maybe that's something, I mean, we all need stories, I guess. I don't know. That's my quick, like 30 second answer. It's, you know, so So do you, do you know the difference between like Western and Eastern star signs slash uh, astrology? 
<laughs> not really. No, no, it's uh, not not my n- neither my uh, it's not my forte personally uh, or academically, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, I, I get the I know the general gist, but I, I'm not out there. Like I'm not paying attention to when Mercury's in in, in retrograde. <laughs> in Gatorade. Yeah, in Gatorade. I'm not doing that. So. Um. Well. Okay. So before I get to my story, just a real quick synopsis here. I do not ascribe to Western astrology. Uh. And this might be kind of shocking to. Some people listening and to you, Colin. A gay, but a gay that doesn't follow, that doesn't read the horoscopes. Interesting. I will note well, this. Well, okay, but you know, you know me, and you know that I'm very, you know, kind of analytical, and I, you know, I also have my PhD, so I, I understand, you know, data and all of that stuff. Yes, um, I love this PhD dick measuring contest. Let's go. <laughs> Do it. No, so Western astrology, I have a big problem with because I just think it's too kind of generic. It's too, you know, every year you have the same cycle over and over and over again. Yeah. What a lot of what a lot of Western people do not understand about Eastern astrology is that it's much it has a wider variety than we understand. So Eastern astrology, when I say that, I mean the um, like the year of the right. So you hear people say that I was born in the year of the dog, the year of the dragon, right? So the Eastern calendar, which, you know, corresponds with like Chinese New Year, et cetera. Right. um, That encompasses an entire year encompasses one star sign. So when people hear that, they go, oh, well, an entire year is one sign. And then you have like, you know, every 12 years it repeats. Yes, but no. So. It re- actually repeats every 48 years because you have four elemental signs paired with the 12 animal signs. So um, you have a four year cycle of one element. And so every 48 years, you'll have the same sign come up. So it's, it's actually much more um, varied than people realize. So, OK. The reason I take more stock in it is, number one, for that. And number two, um, the the data shows that people in Eastern countries, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Japan in particular, because they are more, Japan is the most Western of the Eastern countries. Um, a lot of their marriages are based off of Eastern Zodiac. So when you look at their divorce rate, when it's when it's like a tenth of what the, you know, more eastern country, sorry, more western countries are. And the fact that they base a lot of their marriages off of zodiac signs. um, It seems like it actually has some weight, right? You can put some stock into the eastern zodiac if it actually is is indicative I guess I would say at least on a cultural level, right? It might be like a self-fulfilling cultural narrative, which is totally fine. I mean, our culture is chock full of those, like those those self-fulfilling, like those 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 cultural narratives that you can neither prove nor disprove. Those things that are like the, those are really important, right? Some people call them noble lies. I I don't think that. I think that's <laughs> like that's like your cultural mythology. That's that's super crucial. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, again, I I don't know anything about it, so but no, I mean the, the right, importance so- of the importance of a way of categorizing people within a culture is important, you know, if that culture is to survive, I think. So, yeah. So I know, I know much more about Eastern astrology than I do Western astrology. So if, if anyone wants to go, you know, uh, Mitch is currently uh, taking readings. (laughs) No, if anyone wants to go research their Eastern astrology, I suggest you do so. It's actually quite fascinating. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because, God, as I said before, shut up. The <laughs> reason I, I was waiting until Wyatt exploded. I was just sitting here drinking. and <laughs> Because he's heard all of this shit before. But he was there when this story that I'm That's about true. to tell happened. And he didn't know until after the fact. And he lost he, it. He lost it. So I went, I, as I said before, I've been apartment hunting. And you found one. 
I did find oh, one. Yes. But that's beside the point. I won't get into that. The very first place that I looked at <laughs> was like a, a temporary sublet because I thought, okay, maybe I can do something very temporary until I find something more permanent. And it was moving in with these two other guys and just renting out a room for like a couple months. Hey. And so I went to meet these guys and they had a sign in sheet. And so I walked in the, you know, I walked in the apartment. It was kind of like, it was kind of a mess, but I was like, okay, I could deal with it. <laughs> they had two bidets, which was, a, ooh, okay. okay. Well, let me, let me, let me, as, let me as do a it. gay man who is a primarily a bottom, <clears throat> I don't even have a bidet and I've never used one. Like this was bizarre to me. It was I, a very I, strange setup because there was a house in the front and then another thing in the back that I think was a house. And the guy greeted us with a pot belly and with a hat that had a fan <laughs> built into the hat brim that was fanning his face. It was very strange. And so he waddles up the stairs and we go inside and he shows us the place. And I guess they had a girl living with them before. And he was a writer on writer strike. And I guess he was going out to the strike later, so that's why he had his little fan hat. But it was bedroom, then then bedroom, so two bedrooms, then full bathroom, and then a toilet in a closet. Now, I don't mean that this was a bathroom. I mean, it was literally, there was a full bathroom next to it, and then a closet that I don't know how it had had a toilet plumbed into it. But just in case somebody else was using the full bathroom and you really had to go, it was a closet toilet. And I wish I could have gotten a picture. It was fantastic. And then another bedroom and then a, a, a little sort of living room. But you, you they had a sign in sheet because I guess they yes. met a lot of people to look at this place. And then we walk out. They ha Yes, they had a sign in sheet and he, he motioned to me to sign in. And as Wyatt is making small talk with this man with the, the the fan on his hat. Like an internal propeller beanie. I, I've seen him, yeah. Yes. I know what you mean. I'm writing down my information, and I stop, and I, I, I had to bite my tongue. And I was like, Mitchell, you could potentially room with these people. Just suck it up and wait until you leave. So we left, and I turned to Wyatt, and I said, do you know what was on that sign-in sheet? And he's like, what, like your phone number, your email, blah, blah. No. They wanted, they had a space for your name, a space for the date, and then it said, what's your star sign? <laughs> well, you they don't care what your email is. They don't care what your job is. They don't care what your income is. They want to know your star sign. Because your star sign will dictate whether you're a responsible person or not, don't you see? Or if you're compatible <laughs> with these other two... Uh, mm, the gay people who I would have here. written my email in the stars <laughs> <laughs> but I had to bite my tongue because I was I, I wanted to ask I mean do you want my western or my eastern star sign because those are two different things you would have been thrown to the patio so <laughs> fast I just, I, just, I just shut my mouth and I wrote my little thing and I just left Thank God I, that did not work out, and and they they rented to someone else. But I'm just confirming all stereotypes in my mind about L.A. So yeah, I mean it's, it it checks out, right? Yeah. Yes, it's Biter, so Biter stereotypical strike, L.A. But dark like, sign, all that shit. Hey, you should have won your way out. You should have asked them if they could keep striking at infinitum. <laughs> great. Can you just strike all the way? Like it just stop. That'd be great. Thanks. Anyhow, it's just. If, if if I had someone moving into like a room that I'm in the apartment or house that I was living in, I would want to know a lot of things and star sign would be last on the list. I just, I was in, I was in shock and awe and just like, what is going on? Is this the world that we live in? You could have gotten in water fights with the bidets though. That would have been fun. Oh God. No. <laughs> You could have gone from bathroom to bathroom. I, I mean, I remember the first time I went to Asia, I was like, ooh, what, like bidets in here? Let's, yeah, squirt, squirt, hee hee. The guy actually gave it as like a selling point for the place. He's like, I don't know about you, but I've used a bidet for 10 years. And I feel like every place should have them. And I was like, oh, God. Well, the only, t I mean, the only, the, the reason why the first time I used one was in, was in Asia is because paper, like Southeast Asia, right, paper's really expensive. And so they're That's not going to use it for toilet paper, right? You just, you spray off. So, which is, makes perfect sense. But in America, I've never really understood why, but it, you know, 
it gives you the tickles in, in, in the bum, so I guess that's what people like. <laughs> I think you would have gotten a few tickles in your bum if you would have chosen that place. Actually, no, they didn't choose you. They rejected you, and I think it's because your star sign was all fakakta. They gave you the hevo. <laughs> but they messaged you, they're like, we, went, we, we decided to choose somebody else because based on compatibility or something like that. He, no, they he texted me the day after and was like, just so you know, just so you know, we we rented it to someone else. Um, he came in and like threw money at us, or basically is what he said. I was like, okay. Well, I guess the star sign shit didn't matter. My star sign is cold <laughs> hard cash. Yeah, um, my I, my star sign is Bitcoin. To, oh you know, to the moon. Uh, they can't even get to, to Cleveland at this point. <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah. And then the place that you chose today, the person that you will be that you are yeah, I don't, splitting the lot with, not the not the house, but the lot. I don't necessarily want to talk about her because who knows if she'll actually ever listen to this. She so. won't. No, she's gonna be a source of a lot of material, I feel like. Well well just remember remember, Mitch, that Jordan Peterson would have us all share our bank accounts for full transparency. Otherwise you're a uh, anonymous troll demon. If you don't I'm open so your tired house of that joker to, costume bitch. Oh I know. Unless you open your house to random strangers, you're a anon- uh, anonymous troll demon. So. You're, you're a coward. You're, yeah, yeah. you're a coward if you're, if you're not anonymous. You know, you're a coward. You're an narcissist. Oh, we, we can't yeah. all be so brave to eat beef every day and only beef or whatever it is. So, you know, it's, I'm it's so tired. Very man. few of us mere mortals can do that. I don't know what the hell they did when they shipped him off of that facility, but he got a hell of a lot less interesting after that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like a don't meet your heroes kind of situation, right? Like people had pumped him up more than than probably they should have. And and, and I want to be fair. That's a not even lot of fault. those academia. That's, that's not his fault, I don't think. I mean, of course he wrote it for a while. Why wouldn't you? But I mean, it's like he's a boomer. He's gonna boom. But a lot of those, and yet you're right. And a lot of those people where it was like, oh, they're from academia, but they speak the truth. And then they gave them a little bit of fame, and a lot of them were like, were really disappointing. Like James well, yeah, Lindsay, for example. Nobody knows how bad academia is unless, well, Mitch can speak to this, unless you've fucking been in it. Like, right. it's so much worse than you think. <laughs> so it's not a safe intellectual position to say that academia is bad, because even if you're an idiot, you can figure that out. So maybe we shouldn't lionize people who automatically are like, academia is bad. And they also give some other horseshit opinion. Like... James Lindsay saying something like his, his like ridiculous anti-religious crusade is very strange and annoying to me because it's not like it's like it's not like a um, uh, what's the guy who died? It's not like a Chris Hitchens, uh, you know, critique or something on that level. It's a very like, no, Christians are the problem. And I'm like, you you wouldn't have a career now if it wasn't for Christian people reading your shit. I was going to say, it sounds to me like somebody doesn't like living in the West, so maybe... I know. Like, no, one, no one wants to talk about the alternative. Right. Yeah, no, I, but it's just... A, yeah, anyhow, so Mitch, I'm, I'm glad you didn't listen to uh, to Papa JP, and I'm glad you're keeping some anonymity in your life. I think that's a good thing, so, yeah. <laughs> well, um, yes, perhaps Wyatt and I will, will talk about my new... <laughs> roommate later when i think that she might not actually listen to this <laughs> um but you know she's she's a little kooky um again la cycle back the flow chart cycles back to la explains everything i think that there's a there's a harmless la kookiness of the For sure. i put crystals in the window and stuff For like sure. that For sure. and then there's a strange and damaging level of kookiness it's like i put crystals in the window and if you don't get your fourth vaccine i'll kill you like yeah. That's that's when I feel like it gets to like a strange well, quadrant, and, and that, I blame and that, Gen and X that, people for and that. that. And that and the and the space between those two things is like very very tight, and it can yes. shift quite quite drastically, quite rapidly from the harmless to the, you know, you can go from uh, mamas and the pots, papas to Manson quite quickly. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So. It's just up the canyon. It really it, is. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderland is a short road. That was the it first day that we met. It's a one-way we street. Up. Yes, it is. You know we, we were up in Wonderland Canyon the first day we met. Let Mama Cass rest in peace and do not besmirch her name with Spawn Ranch and Squeaky Frome and all those crazy-ass people. If Mama Cass was a Manson follower, she would still be alive today. You know what? Someone hilarious? else wouldn't. My, my dad was actually in the uh, hotel in, in, in London when she died. Really? Yeah, he was on a uh, he was on a high school trip to to to, to Europe. 
<laughs> was he brought in for investigation? Was he a ham sandwich? <laughs> but it was like, what happened? It's like, Mom, Mama Cass died. And you're like, what? Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Anyhow. She is one of my idols, so I, I will not speak ill of her. And you still haven't seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where they actually have her in the movie. And she's a great character. She was a great character. Oh, my God. Have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Colin? I have not. I need to. Oh, okay. Oh, God. It is a fantastic movie for a few reasons. I'm not going to go into all the... 20 minutes. Shut up. <laughs> but it's sitting here listening to your, you know, Eastern astrology. Um, it It's a very good movie because... I remember the lead-in was like, okay, it's Tarantino's last movie. It's very long and all this stuff. It really shows a love for not just the 60s, not just L.A., not all that. It really is a love for the, for Western filmmaking. Wait, which I movie think. is this? Wait, what, what uh, Once talking? Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, I have seen that one. Sorry. sorry. Okay, good. Yeah, I have seen okay, that. Good. Okay, good. You have seen it. No, that one's great. Um, um, I, I, yes. I, it touched my heart because, spoiler, I love pit bulls, and I love that a pit bull gets to be the hero for once and not the villain. <laughs> It, Just no, for once, I say that, need a child I say that completely larger. seriously. I love that the pit bull is the hero. I think it's great. Filled me with There's joy. There's also a flamethrower involved. It's a lot of I fun. I mean, pit bulls and flamethrowers. You're. It's just this is this is just my life. <laughs> Mitch will see it. No, I won't. Yeah, it's a good movie, and it's, it's a, about the '60s and has Margot Robbie in it. But I don't like Quentin Robbie. Tarantino. It's not a Quentin Tarantino movie. I thought it was. It is, but it's not <laughs> like one. If you told me it was somebody else, I would believe you. It is and is not a Quentin Tarantino movie, Mitch. It's kind of both. Okay. It's got just enough Pulp Fiction in it for those of us who like his movies, and it's also got some of the cool stuff for people who are not the biggest fans. So it's 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 you know it's all things to all people. <sighs> but you know he's coming out with another movie. I don't care. <laughs> What is your issue with Quentin Tarantino? I just don't like him. Why? Mitch doesn't like feet. That's the problem. He also doesn't like Will Ferrell. He doesn't like... No, a, I despise Will Ferrell. He really does for some reason. Will Ferrell and Adam You don't Sandler like the Irish? Just despise. Or Jewish. He doesn't like... <laughs> he doesn't like any immigrants past 1900. Exactly. <laughs> you wasp son of a bitch. Um, anyway, I'm going to... As we're like 30... Eight minutes into this, I'm I'm bringing up some political things. Oh, anyway. uh, well, there's really only two topics that we sort of had to talk oh, about. This question to the chair. Oh, is your is your you know my is the back hurting? Oh. Oh, no, yeah, you bring up something more interesting because I mean I have I have hot takes about local Seattle politics that nobody cares about on the show. So I'll, I'll shut. I, I've said my piece about that, but yeah, we have an election coming up and it's just gotten <laughs> ridiculous. But so bring up something a little bit more more broad. Or more, well, want or more far reaching. So we Wyatt and I talked about this on a previous episode because it was a very interesting and very important Supreme Court case. Um the Voting Rights Act uh debacle with uh Alabama and their electoral well sorry, their uh district map. Um so recap, Supreme Court decided Alabama's new map that they proposed in 2022 did not meet certain requirements that the Voting Rights Act, Act, excuse me, stipulated, and they told the Supreme Court said in their majority opinion, which by the way was a 5-4 opinion, so a very slim major- majority. Okay. They said in the opinion <clears throat> that uh, Alabama had to re-proportion the map to have at least, so preferably two majority-minority districts or one majority-minority district and one extremely close to majority-minority district. So meaning the black population in the state of Alabama could theoretically have two um, representatives. Okay. Um. Because they they have a you know it's fair enough they have a high proportion of um, black citizens in the state of Alabama. Right. So it, the Voting Rights Act basically says this is only fair, right? <clears throat> so 
after that Supreme Court decision was passed down, Alabama said, okay, here's a map, and put out its new district proportionments, apportionments, however you want to say that. And to most, especially those on the left, it seems as though Alabama has directly defied the Supreme Court, and it still only has one majority-minority district and one district that is 40% Black. And so there's now been legal challenges to this. So we will see how this comes out. But it brings up something very interesting and something that's never happened in the history of the Supreme Court. Because it was such a slim vote, right, so five to four, right. Uh, Justice Kavanaugh was the one justice who wrote a concurring opinion. So you have the majority opinion, the dissent, so those were the two sides, and then Kavanaugh wrote a concurring opinion, which was sort of in the middle, because he was the fifth justice who sided with the majority, but had some stipulations and some disagreements with the actual published opinion. Okay. And one of his stipulations in his concurring opinion, was very, like, sort of in the weeds and very legal ease esque stuff that, I'm going to be quite honest, I listened to Sarah Isger talk about this three times. I, I listened to a podcast, I rewound it three times to try and understand. I couldn't understand what the fuck she was talking about. So it's very, very, very technical stuff. But the interesting thing is, this one tiny sliver of a disagreement that Justice Kavanaugh had is what the state of Alabama clung to when they made their uh, new map. And so now we basically have a 4-4 Supreme Court with Kavanaugh in the middle, and Alabama was like, we see you, Supreme Court, and we see you, Kavanaugh, and we're going to go with you right down the middle and see what happens. So they're playing the bluff of the Supreme Court, and they're they're trying to play this out to see what happens. It's an interesting move. No, it is interesting, yeah. Because you know how the legal, we all know how the legal system works, right? It's going to take at least a year, if not two years, for any of this to come to any conclusion. So they've bought themselves some time, and in 2024, when we have our next election, they're going to use this new map that they've come up with that may or may not, you know, pass what the Supreme Court asked them to do. But it, but yeah, right. But the results, the, the results of the Alabama elections will still ho- theoretically hold, right? Despite right. the, uh, yeah. So yeah. they're they're pushing the limits here, and the interesting thing I think is. This is the first time this has ever happened. This is the first time that we've ever had a 5-4 opinion with one person dissent, you know, one person, uh, sorry, concurring. And it's come down to the very smallest, minute, uh, in the weeds details that now we're going to have to watch as they fight in court back and forth. But doesn't this kind of I mean, I, I you you know far more about this kind of Supreme Court stuff than I ever will. It's just it's it's I, I'm I'm living in the past and you're living in the present. You're it's you're, you probably have a healthier outlook. I'm always reading about the, the 1200s. Uh, but but doesn't this also kind of jive with what, you know, other critiques that other people have said a bit for a while that like we are essentially ruled by the judicial system in a way like like court rulings kind of dictate a huge amounts of policy. <laughs> At least so domestically. Is, and it's yes. like it's just kind of crazy in a way that that's how it works. But this to me, as a non-expert, that's that's what comes to mind, whether that's the tyranny of nine. Yeah, something but, like that. It's like, oh, OK. But, but to be fair, you, you you yes, you both make a good point here. But to be fair, this particular Supreme Court and the way it is laid out, uh, you know, thanks to the legacy of Trump and his appointees, um. They are they are turning this back to a Congress do your fucking job, right? Mm. So several times this uh, this term and the previous term, some of the some of the decisions that came down, this one not in particular because there's nothing Congress could have done, 
But many of the decisions that came down became a, we're going to rule in this way, but in the way that we've written our opinions, it means, Congress, you need to fucking pass a law. Like, stop sitting around and letting us make the laws because that's not our job. That's your job. So we're going to rule in a way that really puts the magnifying glass on you and makes you do your job. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to give it to the Supreme Court because they're doing their job. In all right. Honesty. I'm very skeptical as to whether Congress is capable of actually Congress. Oh, they're not. Yeah. I, I don't, what are you talking about? They're young, <laughs> vibrant. Look at Mitch McConnell. He was <laughs> he was so in awe of the office. He stopped for 20 seconds. Look, look at Diane <laughs> Feinstein. She could not even say I. She <laughs> was Miss. She was say Miss. I. She was Miss San Francisco Bay 1922. What are you talking about? <laughs> you I, could hear on the recording of the thing that's going around Twitter. Just say I. Well, just say I. And you know, She's going for this tirade. And I'm just like, she, oh, God, this is me and Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt's just, telling me, just say I. Just say I. No, I'd be Diane. You'd be. You, and you know who the woman was telling her that was Senator Patty Murray. There you go. Oh, was it? Know that that yes. Was Murray was nudging her. Being, just Mom say I. Mom like, Murray. Oh, Murray. And she and she was like, I have to say that the defense appropriations <laughs> bill is good for our pet. Just say I. That was great. I, I, here's the thing. Speaking of words that cannot be said, I cannot wait. And my friend and I always had a running bet on this for the 2020 election, for, for Joe Biden especially. I am just waiting on one of these geriatrics to slip and say a racial slur. That's all that I want. You know that they say them a lot. They just they they're carefully edited and carefully muted, right? You know that there's like yeah, right. They're like right. talking about Hispanics and like he just really likes legumes. Like just move them along. But um, <laughs> you know something like that. Like I would really love to just and 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 like an old tiny one like racial slurs against the Irish or something. Like I really <laughs> yeah. want to hear like like something turn of the century, something really classic. Yeah, can, like like something nice. anti-Italian or something like that. Yeah, the, the, exactly, like I get these the Guidos out of my won't office leave me alone. Yeah. yeah, this 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 Guido down in Florida won't shut up. Yeah, exactly. Like that. You know, someone's like, oh, you know, smells like WAP in this conference or something like that. Please, <laughs> yeah, my WAP. I don't know, but yeah, hey um, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm I'm excited about that because. You know, they show like the the charts of like the average age of Congress and the fact that it's like steadily increasing to like this relatively unsustainable point. I think is fascinating. Well, yeah, I but, think it's I think yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Mitch. No, I just wanted to bring this back because you said your take, but why I wanted to, because you and I have talked about this, you know, offline. This thing about Alabama, you've had some interesting commentary and takes on it, so. Well, we went through the, first. We went through the situation. Well, what are they going to do? Uh, the furthest they could do is what refuse to seat representatives that Alabama elects in the Congress, and so that'll create its own sort of mini crisis, I guess, under congressional rules. Um, but the the issue with the case was Alabama was like, okay, here's a congressional district, and they're like, no, they're like, okay, here's a congressional, and so we did this. I think they said they they Alabama suggested thirty five. Yeah different map variations and each one got rejected by the court system to the point where they just like threw their hands up like we don't know what to do here um and so to me i think what's fair i mean first if you follow the actual proportions of what the legislative bodies of this country should be tied to population we should probably have about 3300 congressional representatives that's just how the numbers are aligned (laughs) first of all which is unsustainable number two i think it should just be a grid pattern and I think that's fair for everybody. And then when you get to dense, denser zones of higher population, the grid just gets tighter. And so it's like a grid that would be like one square mile on each side becomes, you know, a half a square mile on each side. Just, you know, keep going and going and going and going down. I think that's really the only fair way to do it anymore. And you can probably put it into AI or into a map and they can figure it out. Like if you had 435 representatives, like how can you do that over the course of this country? And I genuinely think that that's fair. And you don't end up with these situations where you have, I think in LA you have one congressional district that's a 30 mile drive from one end to another. And it crosses about 18 districts along the way. Like some sick, you know, <laughs> twisted, like like you're in one congressional district if you stay on this freeway, but God forbid you get off to go to a gas station because you're in a different district. <laughs> that's insane. Well, and I, I brought up the point and 
Colin, you might find this interesting or have an opinion on this. If a, so in this particular scenario, the Supreme Court makes a ruling and the state of Alabama says, no, we're going to defy you. So I don't think they actually defy the ruling, first of all, and we can get I don't want to get into the weeds of you know exactly what the ruling said. I don't think Alabama did, but that's beside the point. If they had, right, if the Supreme Court said do A and Alabama said no, we're doing B, who – what happens, right? Like who who gets like – I don't know, held in contempt of court? Who gets put in jail? Like no you one. can't – what happens when a state Nothing. – when a whole state just says no, we're not doing what you told us to do. We're just not – like fuck you. I mean, what maybe, happens? Maybe they get some – you know, maybe they get some like, you know, infrastructure funds withheld or something, but uh, probably not a whole lot to nothing. But see, that uh, then we come back to what you just brought up earlier, right? The funds are dictated by Congress, right? Right. Not the Supreme Court. So if you defy the Supreme Court, they the Supreme Court can't withhold your funds. They can't. Well, what withhold I mean, you know, anything. somebody somebody in in Congress might get pissed off, right? And then. Right, but then you to have to have, like, your entire delegation go with you. You know, like, we have nothing built into the system if, if a whole state says, no, we're not we're not doing what you say. Well, it, it's I, just it's an interesting concept, I think. Yeah, it's be, well, it's because we're no we're not really a republic, you know, like and I hate I hate to drop that in that topic in the 53rd minute of the episode because it's a whole other thing. But <laughs> we're not I, I guess, you know, it, a teaser for a future episode, hopefully with you guys, right? Like I, we're really not a Republic, but we have the, 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 we have the, we have the, the, the Republic, you know, window dressings, but we're really not. And what we are is probably something like three different systems working on top in a trench coat, walking around together, right on top of each other, <laughs> pretending to be one, you know, system. And I think that this is, <laughs> I think this is sort of an example of that. It's like, well, what's going to happen if we don't follow this? I don't know. Congress can do something. Is Congress going to do anything? No. Okay. They don't do anything. <laughs> Exa- they don't do anything. Why do we elect them? I don't know. Because <laughs> don't you believe in democracy? What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think this is just, it, it, it's, to me, it's, I think, just indicative of a much deeper problem that's finally bubbling up to the surface. What's um, the quote like the everyday maintenance of complex systems is our greatest vulnerability? Like it's oh, yeah. like the fact that like I think that for a while like some major apps like Uber or Yelp or things like that have only run because one computer had a post-it note on it that said, please do not shut this off. This is a server. Like yeah, please do not much. unplug this server, that this 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 computer, or or things where it's like Unix code and things like that on on space, on satellites and things like that were written on like the back of like a post-it note. Like it was one person put together basically the equivalent of a calculator, and that was the only thing that they were able to use. And it, the problem is, is that nothing has changed. Something said that like the air traffic control system in this country is basically like that. Like it's basically like a 1985 Commodore computer or something. It's just sort Pretty of much. slowly dinging planes back and forth, and if it goes down, we're fucked. And also, there's nobody left who knows how to repair it. Yeah. So, well, that's this is, America. Nobody you know, knows how to repair it. You guys always bump your podcast that you like. So I'll bump one that I like. And it's actually it's a, I'm late to the game. It was uh, it, it, I think it finished back in 2017. But all the episodes are still up. Patrick Wyman, who's a very um, talented uh, and awesome historian, specializes in, in late Roman Empire uh, stuff. And he did a whole like 35 episode uh, podcast uh, called The Fall of Rome. Highly recommended. But it's interesting. I mean, aside from my nerdy interest, it is interesting listening to this podcast and then comparing Rome, late Rome, to America, completely different in, in many, many ways. But also there's interesting thematic similarities. And this idea that like, you know, oh, like once the Romans leave a region, yeah, nobody knows how to work the bathhouses anymore. And it, they break and nobody knows how to make the part to fix it. You're like, I feel personally called out by that because that is all of America. Like somebody finally retires or dies or just gives up and quits. And they're like, oh. Well, yeah, that that was Jim's job. Well, where's Jim? Oh, Jim's you know retired and he's in Boca. Oh, well, who's gonna do this job? Well, we gotta find somebody like Jim, and then there's Jim's no more Jim. I just, yeah, uh, Jim. I just have to say, ninety percent of whoever listens to this just stopped listening as soon as you said bathhouse, and they started thinking about their next 
their next rendezvous. Because well, who do you think listens Roman, to this show? It's also very Roman Mitch. And so, see, I'm speaking to different people here uh, simultaneously. No, it's but it's just this is a this is this is what happens when systems start breaking down. And, and obviously our system is different than Rome. But it, it, I think, you know, you should history. What is it? Mark Twain said that history r- r- rhymes, right? Like you should pay attention to the rhyme. And, and tr- it's like it's it's sort of disconcerting. And, you know, the 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 our, our supposed division of powers in our system not really cooperating with each other. A, that's not new. Right. That's a feature, not a bug. But to find no real kind of working consensus, that's that's just that's disconcerting, I would say. So, yeah, we have five minutes here before we probably should wrap this up. So you wrap it up. You wrap it up for me. I'll keep talking. <laughs> let's let's hit the uh, yeah. 2024 Republican primary. Oh, God. We have some new characters added to the game, I think. Oh, God. Someone said, what is this turning into a spelling bee? Who's like, the new ones? Because I haven't followed that. A new the, Indian the guy. Right. And I don't remember his name. I don't either. Right, so it's Vivek versus some other guy now, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I feel so bad because he's... I don't. <laughs> I don't. I listened to his no. video. And he no, seems, no, 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 no. He seems like a you know an intelligent guy who really wants... I don't you know, give a fuck. Here's why I'm upset. You can your first introduction to the American people as a person cannot be I am running for president. That has never worked. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Like when when can you think of where a stranger just sort of like popped like Ross Perot was a business hero before right. he decided to run for like people you know, knew who uh, he was. Teddy 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 was, you know, mayor of New York and then he also had a war whole war thing that he did too, right? Like he bagged right. some Spaniards. So, you know, it's like, a whole yeah. And governors of major animals. states. Like you can't pop out of nowhere and be like, Hi, I'm I'm Bumpo, you know, Dingo Harris you and I'm Marianne here for Williamson alone. Marianne Williamson was around for thirty years before this. She had a number one selling book, she was on Oprah. But she She's still relatively unknown until she ran for president. No, I would no, I would say that she had a, a greater like a course in miracles and stuff like that. Like she was more well known, maybe among a certain group of people who have yeah. astrology signs and their roommate <laughs> contracts. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I don't trust anyone where I only find out who they are because they decide to run for president. Because some video popped up on your Twitter feed. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, who the fuck is Asa Hutchinson? You're the governor of something? And you support child trans surgeries? Why are you here? Well, speaking of... Wasn't that a Sukihana album or something? Ho, oh, why is you here? That's <laughs> true. Speaking of... Um... I think he's Indian. Uh, <laughs> Indian... Republican nominees, or sorry, uh, oh, Flo Miller. candidates. Um, oh, sorry, he's showing me. <laughs> there literally shit. is an album called oh, by Flo Millie. Oh, it's God. called Ho, oh, Why Is You Here? <laughs> <sighs> anyway, free publicity. Free publicity. Her Flo Millie is very good. <laughs> um, no, the uh, Ramaswamy, right? That's his right. Name. Yeah, Ramaswamy. He is. Uh, going up in the polls apparently as DeSantis is tanking. I kind of um, like Ramaswamy. I kind of well, like. Well, uh, so you're not alone because he's basically come out in some of his more recent uh, public uh, appearances and/or uh, advertisements make him seem like, and I'm I'm paraphrasing someone else here, a more Trumpier Trump, right? So a more um, Politically savvy, um, uh, a less <laughs> indicted uh, person who no one has been as indicted as me. Yeah, <laughs> right. But someone who will be he's base he's being very smart about it. Right. He's playing the game of I I understand what makes Trump popular. I'm going to run on basically his exact platform and say I'm going to out Trump Trump. And here's how. And here's well, why. I also- I also like that he's in some ways, at least my understanding is, I don't follow it as closely as you do, but is that he's also sort of extended an olive branch to the RFK junior types and kind of like, you know, um, centrists essentially who are pissed off with how things have been going for the past three years or in longer, but particularly the past three years. Let's say wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if you know what I mean. So I, I, I like that too. He seems like somebody who's 
Um, I say this as a compliment because I think it's gotten a bad. Uh, he's Machiavellian, which is a compliment um, because you've got to be able to do that. He's good at politicking, I think. I, I I don't hold my breath. I don't think he's I don't think he's going to get the nomination. If he gets it, I'll I'll be blown away. But I do like no, that. He's, yeah. yeah, that he's at least out there kind of just trying stuff, just just doing his stuff. Right. Uh, and not so worried about pleasing the uh, sort of established establishment GOP people. So I, I can appreciate that. Right. Like even just on a personal level, like, yeah, like that's neat. I, I don't know. Again, I, I, I just I, I don't know if. <sighs> Even if he were even if he were nominated, even if he won, I don't know what he could change at this point. But I mean, it's yeah. better than what we got. So you're, you're right. I don't think he's going to get the nomination, but he's playing a smart game is my oh, I guess is my takeaway here. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Machiavellian is not is a neutral statement, right? Like it could be you can be Machiavellian for good or for evil. Uh, I don't you know, but he's definitely savvy. So he's really running for that secretary of commerce role. <laughs> well, and. Again, to put a, a, a pin in this, DeSantis really just it keeps kicking himself in the ass. He makes one blunder after another, and the most recent one is, I'm sorry. The gay ad? No, no, no. He apparently said, he was asked uh, by the press, would you consider making uh, RFK your running mate? And he said, no, 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 but... I might put him as head of FDA or CDC. And DeSantis is not serious. Well, but when you stop and think about it, that's and you an go, unserious wait a minute. Move. Yeah. RFK has been very vocal. Yes, he's right about a lot of things, in my opinion. But when he's very vocal about uh, the, um, sorry, the, uh, 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 basically the abortion pills, right? Right. And and having like free access to those to like even minors. For a Republican, for a very, very far right Republican to say that I'm going to let him be in charge of FDA and CDC. What you're going to lose mo- a lot of your base if you say shit like that, like the abortive drugs that this man is 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 fine with. And you're going to put him as the head of the CDC and FDA. Like, no, don't say that. Like. You're you're just shooting yourself in the ass even yeah more. no there's I mean and I, this is not me right this is a lot of people have been saying this I think R I mean the R N McIntyre is where I heard it first this idea has been popping on Twitter a lot that right R F K Jr is very useful for attacking that, that one particular part of sort of the medical industrial complex that we all know about that I won't say but on everything else he's kind of dog shit. So keep that in mind. But again, the game of politics is is not is not at all. It's it's about finding compromise where you can. And then also while also not completely giving up on, you know, on your um your your core values. And it seems to me like in this case here that DeSantis just simultaneously fails at both somehow. He 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 won't find consensus when it could help him and then is willing to cede important ground. I just yeah, I, I don't know who's in charge of DeSantis's team or whatever, but just <sighs> It's bad. It's really well, they keep getting fired. No one's in charge anymore. There's no one left. But I just I've never seen somebody so uncomfortably inauthentic. At oh, this. yeah. Like the oh, little girl fair. with the icy. And he's like, yeah. oh, what are you having there? Oh, a lot of sugar in that. And then he moves it along to like sit like shaking hands with somebody else. And I'm like, are you trying to like make fun of the time that 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 Trump was on Halloween telling the kids that they shouldn't eat too much candy? Like, see, when Trump does it, it's charming. Like. It's like that one meme of like the guy at work where the woman's like, oh, I'm flattered. Then she's like, hello, human resources. I yeah. want to call human resources every time I see Ron DeSantis but, but talk. But that's because DeSantis is not a drag queen and Trump <laughs> is. And that's the Look, difference. Look, those kitten heels, Miss Ma'am. He's just Italian. I mean, he's, he's so odd. He has an odd voice. He has an odd body. He has an odd way of talking to people. He hires odd people. He has an odd wife. With their odd Disney princess look. Everything about him is odd and unsettling in a strange way. And that's going up against somebody who puts on orange makeup. Yeah. And I can't disagree. I I, I want to go on record because I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. I have a lot of respect. I, I want to backtrack. I have a lot of respect for RFK Jr. I have I, I he's saying things that need You're to be not said. Get us invited to his next <laughs> no. They, he says things that need to be said. 
and he's he's pushing back against a narrative of the Democratic Party, and he he's trying to make a new party. I I respect and I appreciate and I love all of that. But I disagree with him about some things, which is good, right? We shouldn't agree with everyone about everything. Maybe put him in charge of something else, <laughs> not. But because DeSantis I don't want to give. Here's the thing. I don't want to give twelve year olds. A, you know. I think I think. See, my take is that RF. Sorry, 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 Wyatt. But my my take is that uh, RFK can do far more damage in a good way, not in politics. Mm. I think what he's doing right now. I guess he's technically in politics right now, but not. Let's say not elected. He's doing far more damage to narratives right now than if he were elected. I think that I That's think that thing. the only person on the left who could beat Trump in a general election would be RFK yes. and DeSantis as well. And the reason why is because he is the right combination of nostalgia, of healthy suspicion of the medical industrial complex. And by the way, also the intelligence agencies. Um a well, lot and the of military, boomer which voters. is also the military industrial complex. Yes, yes, yes. And a lot of boomer voters, I think, would respond well to that. He's also well spoken. The guy's fit. He has a beautiful wife who's a successful actress. Like, there's a lot of good things he has going for him. In fact, did you know that Trump named him to a vaccine safety board back in 2017? So he actually worked in the Trump administration I didn't know that. for a brief, a brief period of time. It was like a one month commission or something like that. But um, I, I, the more I hear from him, the more that I like. But I'm surprised that he's able to take more courageous positions than the majority of Republican primary candidates, especially when it comes to even criticizing Trump or trying to work towards the center or things like that. He's more courageous than, you know, let's say, you know, Chris Christie or some of these other people or Asa Hutchinson or, or even Mike Pence, who's just I, that is the most un It's the most inexplicable campaign. I have Mike seen Pence just wants to love Ukrainians, okay? I mean, can't he do that in a bathhouse? Like, why does he need to do this on the public stage? Because it's very the uncomfortable. Because is broken and no one knows how to fix it. I just don't. I know that they say that someone who's who was vice president should run for president. That doesn't mean every time. <laughs> Dick Cheney didn't run for president. Like, at a certain point, you have to say, I'm not going to get this and I'm not going to get more. Like, like. If after January 6th, we never saw him again, and then like, you know, five years, 10 years later, he puts out a book or something, that would be fine. Like that would be like the the austere and genteel thing to do. I've never seen someone piss on an, a legacy so fast than him running for president. Yeah, I mean, it was, well, it was, I don't know, the the Tucker knocking him down a few pegs was super cathartic for me at least, but I don't know if yeah. it was for you, but yeah, I mean, I got hard. It was, he was never exciting. He, the, the last time he I was so mad when Trump picked him in 2016, too, it was it was the maddest I was at the entire primary campaign or the or general campaign, or all of that. I was most mad with Trump when he chose him. I was like, God damn it, because Pence was the only time Pence was good was in like this goes way back, like the 2007, 2008, because it was like, OK, this guy's, you know, sort of genteel. He has some good answers in immigration and stuff like that. Like he could he looks like, you know, the guy from C-Lab 2021. Like he could be pretty good. Um, that was the last time I thought he was interesting. And in 2016, when Trump picked him, I was like, God damn it. Like he picked a complete dunce. Like Pence has like. Pence is like a dog. Like he's not very he's not intelligent. not super intelligent. Yeah. No. And so he picked him and I'm like, oh. God, that was a mistake to the point where I'm like, I think he could have theoretically lo lose the election with this as his running mate. It was only because Hillary picked a pervert that, as her running mate that that Pence won. That's what or, the, that's what Colin said when I said I was picking you as my co-host. As your co-host, <laughs> he said, "You're picking that dumbass." <laughs> so, but, yeah. but when Hillary, the only thing to say Pence is that Hillary picked Tim Kaine, who looks like, "Whoa, you shouldn't let him run children," but. <laughs> That was the that was the only saving grace. But um, yeah, I don't I don't think that I don't know who an ideal vice presidential candidate is for anybody. I know that the only one who's not criticized Trump that much would be Tim Scott, uh, someone else who I think is not very bright. Nope. But I don't know. I don't know at this point who Trump would pick or DeSantis would pick or DeSantis wants to pick that lady in Iowa, that Kim Reynolds or something like that, which is, you know, again, not good. Marianne um, Williamson, VP. Oh, God. Um, there's dark psychic. I love her so much. I do too. She's she's kind of a gay icon, um, and so it's like I don't know who anybody picks on any side. I don't even think that Biden picks Kamala again. I don't. Know. I don't. 
I, I would I wouldn't be surprised if he did not. I mean, she ruined I think Padam. It's already a done deal. She ruined Padam, so that's that's it, right? She like, ruined Padam. Who's picking Kylie Minogue as a vice presidential candidate? That's hell yeah. Isn't she Australian though? Yeah. Do you have to be though? Like, can't they just like not take the office? Like, you can technically pick Mickey Mouse as your vice president. You just they just can't be seated. So she'll, she'll just zoom in from from Sydney on some calls, right? Like, she'll play her own music at at, at bit bars, and it'll be fine. She got a Vegas residency. I'm proud of her, and at the Venetian, not at like the South Point, not one of those shitty places. The like not not an off off strip. She got it at a nice place. Good for That's her. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Well. Um, well, just like her, you know, I can't get you guys out of my head, so. It's just... <laughs> and on that note, Kamala ruining that wonderful song, she can go fuck herself. Oh, I like that song.